Hello, my name is Mr. Bacon Bits, and welcome to my Astral Chain 100% file completion guide. Next is file 6, and this is a beefer. I think it's the longest file in the game. It certainly helps it has the most items of any other file. Let's get started with the cases. First off, a blue case involving reading some files from the start. Some of these are interesting if you take the time to read them, but not all are available. More unlock later on. There's three duty reports that are password protected, though. They're not necessarily to clear the blue case, but provide extra information if you can crack the code. Here's a hint for it. It's Akira Howard's birth date. Yeah, I guess that's quite a big hint. Judging by that, you can probably figure out what those duty reports are about, though. We're back in Harmony Square, and there's actually a lot to do, even though this isn't our main stop. But as always, the case is first. Over here in the basketball court is another graffiti troublemaker. Wrap him with Arrow Legion before he gets away. You'll find Carlos again over here outside the coffee shop. In this red case, help him with the investigation to find out some gang activity. Remember the bomb mission from an earlier case? Climb the stairs to that rooftop again to find Joey and his partner in shooting practice. This is another shooting range red case. It's a little tougher than last time, though keep in mind, you don't need to beat Joey's target to clear the case. Just playing it is enough. This blue case involves having to search for someone's lost cash chip. Just use the item she gives you as a scent for Beast Legion to find it. Gotta be more careful with those things. Right in front of Art Grand Theater is a little girl who's lost. Use the clues she gives you to help pr bring her to Mama. Should be simple to follow. Along the elevated walkways, there's a girl who lost her balloon. Just use your Legion to retrieve it. There's one more blue case in Harmony Square, and it's probably the most annoying one. This little girl wants some ice cream. So just head down and buy some from Rossner's. Now you could just bring her a single scoop and finish the case, but you get more duty points if you bring her a larger ice cream. There are three sizes. This is where the difficulty comes in. You need to balance the ice cream with your Joy-Cons or controller and keep from dropping scoops. And, uh, the Avalanche ice cream is ridiculous. I don't think I ever tried it. But again, you can just drop all but one scoop and not have to worry about that balancing act. Of course. Uh, Past Harmony Square, okay. we have a red case that is just a sneaking mission. There's a security detail After that, there's another red case through the dragnet. Sneaking time again. As soon as you're past the previous in sneaking mission, investigate the broken drone nearby to start a red case. Right around the corner is another guard who's being attacked by hoodlums. Rescue him for another red case. Next up, when you reach the entrance gate to the Sector 5 settlement, ask around Sector 5 opens up. Be careful with this investigation case, because if you solve it before getting all the other cases in the area, they'll disappear. With that in mind, talk to the exiled man for a blue case. He's suspicious, so keep talking to him and subdue him. This injured person over here is a lookout. Give him a medicine so he'll feel better. There's a shivering woman in the settlement. She'll want you to deliver a hot lunch to her hubby at the gate. Do so, and you get a card that gives you a discount on Hermitonic. On the roof, there's a boy with a lost dog. Get the dog back to the boy to solve this blue case. Also on the roof, there's a guy with a haywire drone above the settlement gate. Cut the connection with Sword Legion to solve this case. After gaining enough relevant clues, Hal will start questioning you about the knowledge you collected. New cases will open up at this point. On the roof is a man who's looking for his pass. You can use Beast Legion to help look for garbage to dig through to find it, but it's actually right nearby anyway. Remember that Hermitonic I mentioned? Did you grab one? Good. There's a drunkard over here that'll give you some information if you give one to him. He actually points out the info dealer, which will be important. 
Nearby are some kids that want to play hide and seek. Use the items they dropped as scents for Beast Legion to pick up, and then just follow him around to the kids. The last case in the settlement is not immediately apparent. You'll have to talk to the aforementioned info dealer and ask him for more info on Secret Passage, assuming you have that clue. He'll ask you for a favor in return, so go ahead and help him. He'll give you the clue that'll end the investigation. After solving the investigation case, head to the other end of the settlement and you'll find a scientist being ganged up on. Rescue him for another red case. After infiltrating the Hermit base, you're thrust into battle against Hermits and the leader, Kyle. Once grabbing Douglas's brief briefcase, before leaving the base, talk to this Hermit for a red case to undergo training. As soon as you exit the Hermit base, a blue case pops up for finding Douglas. In the Astral Plane, partway into it, you encounter a Hestia Chimera for a red case. There's a red case at the very end of the Astral Plane segment. Fight your way to Douglas. As soon as you make your way out of the Astral Plane, you'll have to fight some hermits that turned into powerful aberrations for a red case. If you backtrack onto the previous building using the bridge nearby, you'll be able to go down a ladder and access floating platforms. Use Arm Legion to move them towards another building, where you'll have an optional boss fight of sorts. It's certainly a unique chimera at any rate. Continuing along, you'll have to face some flying chimeras inside a building for a red case. Keep going to see a woman getting trapped underneath some debris. Rescue her for a blue case. Continuing just a bit further, you'll come across an axe chimera to fight for a red case. Finally, the last red case is fighting the homunculus at the end of the file. <laughs> On to Red Matter. There's a bunch spread through in a few areas of Harmony Square, so explore every nook and cranny before heading out to Zone 09. You should be at 7% before going down the ladder leading out of this area. There's some bits of red matter scattered around this first sneaking area. I'll show where each are. Don't forget to look up in the rafters. You should be at 18% by the time you're done.
After getting past the second sneaking area, there's a couple bits of red matter here. Should bump you up to 19%. Here in the place with the missing guard, there's red matter that'll get you to 20%. Go down this path around the side of the buildings for a small bit of red matter, then continue and take this ladder for some more. 22%. Backtrack and take the normal way. Get the red matter along the way for 26%. Don't forget the passage going down this way before crossing the small bridge. On that bridge I mentioned before, look left for some red matter, then look right and change up to the path below. Get the red matter down there for 27%. You can change up back to where you were. Chain jump along rooftops here for some more red matter, 28%. Finally, there's red matter around these areas before heading into the Sector 5 settlement. 30%. Aside from the small red matter at the entrance to Sector 5, there's nothing else to find here. Do the investigation until you can head forward. Once you do that case, head onto the roof, get the red matter in front of the sign, and drop down to the train car down here, then go on either side for some red matter. 33%. Go down the nearby ladder and get the red matter here for 35%, then into the ventilation for some more. 36%. After another long stretch of no red matter, once you exit Kyle's base, take a left and collect the red matter in this area here, 41%. Then head back through the subway car for 43%. Back where you first entered the Hermit base, you can continue on here to another building. Get the red matter here for 46%, both floors be that you can reach before moving on. Cross the bridge into the other building, making your way up to the Chimera and Red Portal for 50%. Halfway there!
Before entering the red portal, cross the nearby bridge back onto the previous building. Get the red matter up here on the roof for 51%. In the astral plane now, cross the bridge of invisible platforms for 52%. Take a right here for some red matter, 54%. Backtrack and take the main path, following it to the battle against two chimeras for 60%. Follow the path up to the part where you have to shoot a node to progress. Should have 62%. Keep going, taking a small detour to an alcove first, until you get to the Hestia fight. The red matter there as well should get you to 67%. Continuing on to the moving walls, you should be at 69%. Nice. Keep going until you get to the part with the annoying support chimera and three nodes to shoot. 75%. Before crossing over the ramp here leading to the two buttons, make sure you have 77% red matter. This is a point of no return. Once you do, get the red matter surrounding the two buttons before heading up, 78%. Grab the red matter in the last fight arena here for 81%. Back in the real world, instead of heading after Douglas, go back across the bridge again. Go down the ladder at the roof now, and collect the red matter on this floor for 83%. Head across to Building 2, as it's called in the map, for more red matter, both on the roof and the floor below. 87%, getting close!
Continue along until you see the frantic woman down below. Getting all the red matter along the way should get you to 94%. Keep going until the elevator indoors for 97%. This last indoors area before the big homunculus end boss should get you to 100%. Starting off the supply crates, we're in Harmony Square. One's here by the building near the basketball court. Don't mind the check marks on the map overlay, I'm just reusing the map from File 4. In front of Songbird Diner in this corner of the map is a crate next to a parked cab. Another is on the rooftop where the shooting 201 red case is at. There's a crate next to the parked cab before the stairs to the elevated walkways. Cross the street to the Rossner's ice cream parlor. There's a crate over here. Don't forget the crate on the elevated walkway by Larger Burger. Speaking of, if you head inside the Hermit Hideout by Larger Burger, there's two new crates inside. There's another near the Svolky sign, next to a red-shifted civilian. And another just outside the indoor shopping center. Finally, there's another by the repair bots on the elevated walkway here. Let's move on. There's a crate in the back alley leading to Zone 09. In the first sneaking area, there's a crate in this area where a guard is circling around. Up in the rafters is another crate. It's kind of to the left of where you enter this area from. Drop down from the previous crate for another crate with some red matter. Climb up this ladder next to a guard to the right of where you enter, then chain jump to this crate. Push the floating platforms on this side over to a catwalk. Open the crate. Push the floating platforms the other way, to below the guard that has the key. There's another crate here. Moving on to the next sneaking segment, there's a crate next to a single guard in the middle. And another crate below the two guards talking to each other. After passing those two guards, there's a crate on the balcony to the left. Iris, 
Nearby the officer in trouble is a crate on top of a platform. Now, I think the intended method is to equip one of your legions with a chain boost ability node. Uh, it's It lengthens the astral chain so that you can chain jump to it. But I just cheesed it with this makeshift jump that I'm doing. If you're wondering how I'm doing that, I'm using the back front attack command with baton mode, then the sync attack afterward without sword legion. If you don't have that attack command, you'll need to upgrade your X baton until you get it. Follow the main path until you get to a makeshift bridge between two buildings. In the footage you'll see, I'm backtracking to it. Go down this lower path to a crate. By the injured lookout guy, use the vent as a bridge to a secluded dead end where a crate is. Go back to the injured lookout and get the crate below. There's a crate in the Kongi shop within the settlement. Look for this crate beside the train car on the other side of the settlement. There's also one inside that same train car. You're intended to chain jump to on top of it and carefully land inside, but you can do that makeshift jump trick I showed earlier too. There's two crates in the Hermit base, both in Kyle's little... throne room, I guess you could say? After exiting the base, head left all the way to the end to find a crate behind a train car. While following Douglas's scent, you'll get to this building. There's a window looking out with some red matter, so follow along the outside and down the ladder for a crate within a secluded room. Keep following the trail, and taking, after taking out the group of aberrations inside this building, there's a crate in the corner. Across the way is a hidden path behind some boxes that leads to another crate. Nice! From the start of the astral plane, take a right up here to an alternate path. Chain jump across previously invisible platforms for a crate. Backtrack, then take a left at the fork instead. Follow the path, and you'll find two separate crates you can chain jump to each. After shooting the node to proceed forward, take the path of hidden platforms to the right for a crate in an alcove. After the Hestia fight, go up the elevator and look the opposite way instead of the way forward. There's an invisible platform to chain jump to. Follow that path for a crate. At the part with the moving walls, there's an elevator around the corner that'll let you get on top of said walls. Use that to chain jump to this crate.
There's a crate over where you have to activate three nodes to proceed forward. And another crate on the path next to a barrier you have to cut. From here, get on top of the moving blocks below, over to this lone block that glows when you have Iris on. Look around for a node that occasionally peeks out. Shoot that, and ride the block down to a secluded alcove with this crate. Once out of the astral plane, head back across to the bridge here to the previous building. You can now head down the ladder here, leading to the third floor where a crate is. On that same floor over at the balcony, you can chain jump to another building where you'll find two crates. One of them has to be opened with Axe Legion. Head across to the new building using the floating platforms, then go downstairs to find this crate. Follow where Douglas went from the first security camera, then go around this corner for a crate. At the point of, of no return, signified by that cutscene, you'll find a crate before heading inside the building. That should be the final one. Starting off the dropped items, we have one on the table of the break room in HQ. There's another in the garage. There's two in the fr training floor, actually. One by the elevators, and one that needs to be shot down inside the training room itself. Finally, there's one on the roof, right over here in this corner. Again, it's kind of hard to see in daylight for some reason. At Harmony Square, right near where your bike is, look at the building nearby over at the Harmony Media Center digital signs. There's an item to shoot down on one of the O's. Head over to the two buildings by the basketball court. Shoot down the ladder here, then chain jump across for a dropped item. There's another item over by the bus stop here, across the street from the subway entrance. There's an item to shoot down from the parked GOL truck, across the street from Larger Burger. There's a dropped item on one of the hologram signs in the indoor shopping center. From the right of where you enter the first sneaking segment, go up the ladder by this guard, then chain jump to the item up there. Past the second sneaking case, take the path around the back of the buildings, and you'll see a dropped item along the way. Just a little further, you'll see an item on the side of a building to shoot down. On this bridge between two buildings, chain jump down to a pathway below. There's an item at the end. On the roof of the settlement is a dropped item in the back corner here. And another by this suggestive woman, also on the roof. And yet another up here by this lonely girl. 
and one last one behind the neon sign above the settlement's entrance gate. Once in the ventilation ducts of the Hermit base, turn around from where you start and bump into the grate around three times to knock it down. Pick up the item behind there. It also counts as the toilet for this file. Also in the ventilation ducts, take a right here for an item. Look at us. A couple cops sneaking around like cat burglars. <sighs> On this bridge to the next building while following Douglas's scent, you may notice something. Shoot that item down there. Once back out of the astral plane, return to the first building in this group of four. A dropped item will be on the floor that wasn't there before. That should be the final one. Starting off the dig spots, there's one inside the basketball court in Harmony Square. After exiting the Hermit base, head left and investigate in the middle of the Red Matter Circle for a dig spot. Even outside of combat, isn't it? Of course, it can't actually smell, per se. What it actually does is extract a sample of DNA from residual sweat or other organic matter and... Finally, at the fork in the beginning of the astral plane, take a left and you'll find a circle of red matter next to a corrupted vendor. A dig spot is right in the middle of that circle. 